Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, good morning. Uh, I'm John Curran. I'm the president and CEO of the American Registry for Internet Numbers, what you know as Aaron. You probably interface with us mostly through things like who is, looking up IP numbers and where they are. Uh, I'm going to give a presentation about the depletion of the IP version 4 address space and uh, the rollout of IPv6. Uh, this is something that I give this talk to a lot of different audiences because it's very timely now. Um, I would say 30% of the content, 40% of the content goes right over the heads of the audience. Uh, so I'm actually very happy to be presenting here because I should be able to get some good questions and some good discussion going. Uh, we're going to go 50 minutes. Uh, when we get near the end, if it turns out we still have more, we'll go across the way to 114 and do a Q&A session over there. So let me get right in. Um, Internet protocol, you guys know this. Uh, what we call IP is IP version 4. It uh, was developed with the original Internet in the spring of 78. Uh, the ARPANET was actually, ARPANET and MILNET were the first two networks that used them. They were built by a company called Bolt, Boranek and Newman, BBN. Uh, I served as the CTO of BBN from 90 to 90, 1998. Um, and uh, it was a company that was involved in doing some of the original protocols. Um, IPv4 took off in a very fast pace. People don't understand. People think about the Internet today being a wild success. The Internet was a wild success in 1992. We already were experiencing 400 and 500 percent growth rates for the first few years of the Internet. And um, the Internet IPv4 address space is 32 bits, which is just over 4 billion addresses. Um, this is a major problem. In 1992, the IETF, the Internet Engineering Task Force, did some um, uh, work. They did it under a group working group called the ALE Working Group, A-L-E, Address Limitation Extensions uh, Working Group. And in that working group, we did forecasts of when the IP address space, IP ver version 4, would run out. And we came up with somewhere between 2010 and 2017 as the consensus estimate. In 1992, based on the rate of internet growth over the preceding five years, we already knew the internet was going to run out of IP addresses in 2010 because it's a 32 bit field. So this was something um, pretty amazing. We knew all the way back then that we had a ticking time bomb in IP version 4 and we were going to run out of addresses, okay? Having said that, it's not an easy problem to solve. Um, the I I Internet was commercializing in 1992 and 1993. The NSFNet, National Science Foundation Network, had been replaced with five of the initial five commercial networks. Those were Sprint, MCI, UUNet, PSI, and BBN. Uh, the, uh, when I started working with the Internet, we had a host file, host.txt still in place, so there was an enumeration of every computer and its IP address. We had just really begun to deploy DNS. Yeah, I'm old, that's right. Um, so uh, the fact of the matter is that we were already running into scaling problems. That's what DNS was about. We couldn't keep a central host.txt file updated. In 1993, we did some changes to how we did IP address assignment, okay? And what we did is, the first one we did is we adopted variable blocks. Prior to 1993, if you got an address block, you either got uh, uh, what we call now uh, slash 8, slash 16, or slash 24. Back then it was a class A, class B, or class C. Um, basically too big, too big, and too small were really the three block sizes. A lot of people needed 500 addresses for their business and we couldn't give it to them. So we ended up giving them instead 65,000 because it seemed like a good number to give them. Um, and. Uh, so we knew that was a mistake and we rolled out classless interdomain routing, CIDR, C-I-D-R. And we introduced the notation that you all love called slash notation where a network block has its uh, significant bits designated by a slash and the number of bits. And so that allowed us instead of giving someone a 24, we could give someone a 23 or a 22 which had, you know, two class C's or four class C's and give them the right size block. Even with that change, we realized we were still going to be running out. CIDR made us do a better job of address management but didn't solve the problem. What did we do? We formed a working group, task force actually, called the IP Next Generation Task Force, IPNG. Thirteen member panel. I happened to be the official operator member of the panel. We had academic, 
researchers, government, host companies, operating systems, a little bit of everyone. And we looked at six different successor protocols for IP version 4. And um, we uh, had the typical, you know, inter warrior fighting between the groups and some groups merged and some groups uh, stole each other's ideas and we ended up with a short list of two and then we selected in 1994, we selected one of them and it was designated IP version 6. We skipped IPv5 guys. Um, IPv5 was a BBN experiment five years earlier. We took the internet protocol number, we couldn't use it. That's why the internet protocol goes from 4 to 6 because version 5 had already been assigned. IP version 6, a fixed 128 bit address field. Okay, so 128 bits, 2 to the 128, 340 trillion, trillion, trillion. Uh, also 340 undecillion if you happen to be into big words for, that represent a lot of zeros. Um, if you took and you gave IP addresses a certain size, a certain density, and you could pack all of IPv4 into a golf ball, a similar sized sphere packed at the same density of IPv6 addresses would be the size of the sun, okay? So that's a relative comparison here of 2 to the 32nd versus 2 to the 128th. We hope to never go through this change again. <coughs> I have faith even with the best healthcare technology, I will never go through this change again. Um, <laughs> So uh, fact of the matter is that we adopted IPv6 and um, it's similar to v4. All the protocols you know. So HTTP, HTTPS, SSL, it, it all runs. Everything SMTP, everything runs because it's an IP change. TCP and UDP above that still sit there, still do the same old thing. We just have bigger addresses to deal with. So we adopted this new protocol in 1994 called IP version 6. Um, I will tell you that I'm the guy on record as saying we made a mistake when we chose IPv6 because IPv6 materially has no new features. It is literally very similar to IPv4. We did some cute things. We built, built in security um, which ended up becoming IPsec for IPv4. And we built in auto configuration which by the way didn't exist in 94. You all call it DHCP today. Okay? So everything we tried to put in 6 to make it unique and valuable, people necessarily said if it's that unique and valuable, let's put it in an IP version 4. So we have no carrots to cause people to roll to IPv6. There are some differences. Some people can claim there's minor improvements, but materially, it's very, very similar. Having no carrots makes transitioning v6 very difficult. Your only, only reason to ever move there is because v4 won't work. And the only reason v4 won't work is it's running out of addresses. This means that the demand curve goes from zero to 100% for everyone at the same time not a good deployment strategy. And I went on record saying this and now I'm up here being the one championing it so you sort of see the irony of that situation. Um, okay. So summary, 1981 for IPv4, 1999 is when the IPv6 standards were finalized. We actually did do this and get IPv6 through IETF processes, draft proposed, final standard. Uh, look at it. 11 years ago we got this done. Why? Because we knew we needed to have IPv6 deployed in every host operating system we cared about in order to make a transition even viable. That meant getting this protocol ready and out to host operating system vendors and router vendors probably five years before any customer ever asked about it. Uh, 128 bits address format. We all know dotted decimal notation. It's what a V4 address is. Um, okay. So you've got 128 bits. Uh, if you try to use dotted decimal notation, well, you'll be here all day. We ended up going with a hexadecimal notation, uh, four character groupings, A through F, uh, and you've got eight four character groupings. So your IPv6 address, 2001 colon 0 DB8 0 2 3 colon, it's long. Get used to it. We're going to have long addresses. Um, this actually colon's pretty good and, and the format's pretty good. Turns out we, have one little challenge for those people who are BNF parser uh, guys like I am. Uh, it turns out to be challenging to write this in a way that also handles port numbers on the end with a colon. Uh, and so people, 
the ITF went one way and the W3C went another and uh, there are ways of doing it. Your local uh, libc, uh, there's some libraries that will help you. The DNS resolution libraries actually do a pretty good job of this. Um, okay, so uh, examples of prefix notation work the same. Okay, so we've got V6, it's out there, it's 1999, we want everyone to deploy it but no one has any reason to deploy it. Okay, now fast forward to today. We have allocated 80.8%, 80.08% as of June 2nd of this year of the IPv4 address space. Allocated means the IANA, the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, which is a logical function that holds the free pool, has delegated address blocks to the five regional registries. Aaron is one of those five, AP NIC in Asia Pacific, RIPE NCC in Europe, um, LACNIC, which was originally part of Aaron, we spun that out for Latin America so they could have someone, a group that was more local, had language and cultural issues that would be more responsive. Afrinic was originally part of Aaron. We spun that out as well. So there's five regional registries. The five RIRs all draw from the same pool. So it's one bucket and we all have five straws. You've seen this. If you've ever had a Mai Tai bowl at a Chinese restaurant, you know, whoever draws fastest gets more. Um, it's that simple. And so we actually have been drawing down at similar rates among the regions, fairly comparable. I have a slide that shows that. But it's very consistent. We have been going through this address, uh, these addresses um, at about, well, I hate to say it, but about five to six percent per year. Well, if we've allocated 80 percent and unallocated is unallocatable is really what that should say, 13.67 percent. Those are addresses we can't allocate to ISPs and hosting companies, can't allocate to end users, cannot use for general internet connectivity. Why? Well, that's network 10, you know. RFC 1918 addresses live in this space. For those people who know multicast and anycast addresses, they live in this space. This is the address space we can never get back. It's permanently allocated to other purposes. We're down to 6.25 percent of internet address space. 6.25 is a very small number, okay? Um, let me give you an idea of how small it is. If we look at the address space in terms of available IPv4 slash 8, so these are class A equivalents, slash 8 means 1 256th of the address pool, okay? And we look over the last five years, we had 62 slash 8s available to be assigned to hosting companies, ISPs, end users in March of 2006. You can sort of see the steady drop throughout the year. Uh, in March 2010, that last bar, you see 22. Well, I'll tell you, this year, in the next quarter, we allocated even more. So we're actually, this number's now 16, okay? We're going through this year's rate at about twice the, the previous rate. You can see this trend line, folks. If you follow this trend line out, I will tell you it's 340 days from now that this hits zero, okay? 340 days. The central pool runs out of address space. That's pretty close, guys. So um, at that point, each RIR has three to six months of space. We'll continue to meet requests from ISPs, hosting companies, end users. Uh, the way this works, by the way, is you don't buy IP addresses. You apply to your regional registry. You show that you have a need. If, you've, if you're an ISP, you show you've used 80% of the last block we gave you. And when you've used 80%, you can apply for the next block. We have every ISP and hosting company in the country. Actually, Aaron handles right now Canada, U.S., and parts of the Caribbean. They all come back to us every six months to a year and say, we've allocated all these new customers. Can you give us more address space for the next six months to a year worth of customers? Every ISP who has been relying on this for years for their growth is going to get told no starting in about a year and a half. 340 days plus about three to six months of inventory. So every ISP has this essential business demand to have more addresses to connect more customers to their network and they're all going to start getting told no at the same time. This is wicked cool, okay? <laughs> so um, <clears throat> IPv4 demand, if you're curious how it's been allocated among the regions, 
This gives you ripe NCC, LACNIC, Latin America, AFRINIC, APNIC for Asia Pacific, AFRINIC. And it has been fairly evenly divided. We actually have an agreement among the RIRs, the regional 